Zeno was excited to start his first day at the air traffic control station, but no one could have prepared him for what was about to happen today. During his shift, a plane deviates from its flight path and flies erratically, causing many dangerous situations. The events of that day will leave a lasting impact on all those involved. Zeno couldn't handle just watching without being able to help, so he looked at the route the aircraft had flown one more time. But why was the plane flying like that? What did Zeno realize and will they get everyone to safety? But before we start, smash the like button and make sure to subscribe if you haven't, and hit that notification bell so that you won't miss any new stories. Zeno arrived at the air traffic control station, eager to start his first day on the job. The veteran staff welcomed him and showed him the ropes, introducing him to the equipment he would use to monitor the skies. At first, everything seemed to be going smoothly. Planes took off and landed without incident. Everyone was going on the right course, and Zeno could keep up with the pace of the busy airport. One of the planes on Zeno's radar began to veer off course, flying in strange and unusual directions. Zeno squinted his eyes and looked closer at the radar. What is that plane doing? He looked around him to see if his mentor was nearby, but he was all alone. He tried to get in contact with the plane, but it wasn't on the same frequency. Panic began to set in as Zeno watched the mysterious plane continue to fly in strange, unpredictable patterns. He had never seen anything like it before and was completely out of his depth. Zeno was stunned. He frantically searched for the missing plane, but it was nowhere to be found. He was torn between raising the alarm and risking a panic or keeping quiet, hoping the plane would reappear on the radar. His colleagues would return from their break any minute, so he had to think quickly. As the minutes ticked by and the missing plane remained unaccounted for, Zeno felt a growing sense of dread. He feared he would get fired if he told anyone. But if passengers were on that plane, he had to let someone know. So when his colleagues returned, Zeno made the decision to tell them about what had happened. His colleagues reacted better than Zeno imagined. They weren't mad at him. They were just very confused. No one had heard of anything like that before. Then, out of nowhere, the plane returned to the radar. It was still flying like it was being piloted by a child, or at least someone who had never flown before, but they had sight of it again. The plane was miraculously back on course, but not for long. Where the plane was supposed to go in a slight curve, it kept flying straight forward right into the course of another plane. It was getting really dangerous now. If none of the planes moved, they would collide with each other. ATC Station, Speedbird 1376, request to go off course over, the commercial plane asked. Zeno had to make a split decision. Should he let the plane go off course, or should he wait it out? ATC Station, how do you read? The planes would hit any minute now. Suddenly, the strange flying plane curved to the right and made what seemed like a U-turn. Everyone in the ATC station now watched the radar. They had ordered every airplane that was slightly close to the dangerous flying plane to return to their airports or guided them into another course. There was no way of contacting the plane, so they cleared the sky and got everyone safe. They still had no idea why this plane flew like this, but they had to do something. Zeno suggested calling the Air Force, as it didn't seem they could get the plane to land safely. Zeno's mentor and colleagues agreed. It could either be a hijacked plane or someone unable to fly a plane. The Air Force dispatched a fighter jet to intercept the rogue plane and try to regain control of the situation. They could see the fighter jet making repeated attempts to regain control of the rogue plane, but to no avail. Zeno became more and more convinced that this plane had been hijacked but at one point he noticed something strange. He had to double check it before he called any colleagues to show them, but he was sure of it. The signal actually was coming through. He realized that the pilot in that plane, whoever it was, could definitely hear Zeno and the others. But still, Zeno didn't hear anything back, which meant that the pilot was ignoring them on purpose. Usually, this could only mean one thing. In the meantime, Zeno's colleagues had found out that luckily, there were no passengers on this plane, which made it easier for them to make a decision about their next steps. It was a very serious situation, and there was only one thing left that they could do now. And the plane still hadn't returned to its route, so it was posing a real threat to the other traffic, and they needed to fix this as soon as possible. First, the military sent a few of their own jets into the sky. They needed to get as close to the plane as they could, and perhaps then they would be able to see who was in the cockpit. Suddenly, Zeno stared at his radio. 
It had been silent this whole time until now. A noise came out of it, and he looked around to see if anybody else had heard it. He was perplexed and didn't know what to do. He had to think quick. He decided to call Rob, one of the colleagues that had helped him earlier, and explain to him what he had just heard. The colleague stared at him with wide eyes and asked, Are you sure that's what you heard? Zeno confirmed he was absolutely sure of it. Rob believed him and quickly went to work. He needed to take action. It had become a very delicate situation. He had to inform the military about this as soon as possible. Zeno hoped that he had done the right thing. You see, the pilot had said something to Zeno, something that gave him a lot more responsibility than he had hoped to take on on his first day. He knew that this man's life depended on him now. The man had said, Do not let them shoot me, please. Of course, the pilot had no idea that it was Zeno's first day, but he would find out later and they would all understand the irony of this. In the meantime, Rob had alerted the military jets that were still trying to guide the plane to safety. He had contacted them just in time. They had been getting ready to shoot. He knew that the plane was not actually hijacked. After Zeno told him what he had heard on the radio, he knew exactly what to do. You see, Rob had figured out what was going on. He had checked the database to see which pilot had been assigned to this specific flight, and he recognized the name. And he also noticed that this flight had been requested by that pilot himself. But he couldn't be completely sure of it until he checked the radar. When he saw the shape of the route that the plane had flown, he burst out laughing. He did everything he could to help this pilot land safely. Sure, he had been very stupid and irresponsible, but that didn't mean that he deserved to get shot by the military. Rob explained to the military pilots that this plane was not hijacked and it would land soon. He went back to Zeno's desk and grabbed the microphone. John, get your ass down here now. You are putting your own life in danger for this stupid joke. Zeno held his breath. Luckily, pilot John listened to him and obeyed the order. Only then did the military jets finally slow down, but they did not leave yet. The plane slowly turned around and flew back to the airport where it came from. It had clearly completed the flight path it had wanted to take. The landing was actually still making a lot of people on the ground nervous. A pilot who could be capable of something so stupid. Everybody on the ground was waiting for the door to the airplane to open and for John to come out with his hands in the air. People that had stayed behind in the air traffic control tower were able to use binoculars to get a faint look into the cockpit where they just saw John slumped over with his head in his hands, all while his co-pilot was clearly talking or even shouting at him very angrily. The police soon had enough and used a megaphone to demand that John come out now if he did not want to make the whole situation worse for himself. After that, John and the co-pilot quickly made their way to the exit. They probably had not seen or realized that so many people were waiting for them. The door opened up and John slowly started walking down the stairs that had already been put in place by ground control. The co-pilot walked right being him and you could almost see the steam coming out of his ears. And he confirmed as much when the police officers on the ground tried to put handcuffs on the pilots. He was begging and pleading that he had no idea what John was planning and that he only joined him as a favor. John told the officers that this was the truth and for now they let the co-pilot go. The very defeated looking John was escorted to one of the cells at the airport. He really wanted to talk to Rob, but the officers would not allow it until they had asked their own questions about the rogue pilot. But luckily, Rob told John that he was willing to wait, and Zeno was also not going anywhere as he had gotten way too curious about John's explanation. Rob almost stormed into a room and was ready to grab John was the collar of his shirt. He was very angry and demanded to get an explanation. John seemed worn down from the police interview, but knew that there was no way around telling the story again. John started off by admitting to Rob that he had not told him that today was his last day as a pilot. After years of flying, it was finally time to retire. Zeno could see that Rob had a big reaction to this and it was quickly explained why. Rob and John had actually been very good colleagues for years now. They nearly spoke each other daily over the intercom, and Rob actually went out of his way to always take care of the plane that John flew that day. And that was also what had been John's intention for today. He wanted to do something special for his last day as a pilot. Something that people, and mostly his friend Rob, would remember forever. And so he had called in a couple of favors so that he could make a short final flight with only another co-pilot. That pilot indeed had no idea what John was planning, 
and expected that this would only be a short, simple flight to cap off an incredible career. But that man quickly realized that they were not flying a normal route that day. They were drawing something in the sky. John had simply wanted to prank Rob, a practical joke, that was it. And when Rob heard him say that, he immediately realized why John had chosen this drawing. For years now, they had been consistently calling each other you dick over the radio. They had even gotten sanctioned for it on multiple occasions. Rob never expected that this little joke would get so incredibly out of hand, and when it did, he just did not know how to handle it, which in turn only made it worse, of course. Now the police had gotten and he would soon have to explain himself in court. This was most definitely going to have consequences. In the end, John lucked out. He did not have to go to jail for his stupid prank. He did have to do a lot of hours of community service and pay a fine, which was not a low number by any stretch of the imagination, but luckily he could afford it. Rob and John are still good friends, even though Rob thinks the now retired pilot is an absolute idiot for pulling the prank. And for Zeno, he will probably not get many days more exciting on the job than that very first day.